Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. The, the Horse Center fans have spoken. They want Breeders' Cup shows, Brian. So well, yeah. let's yeah. go. Yeah, Breeders' Cup shows. Last week, we did our most likely winners. If you haven't seen that, check it out uh but today we're uh, looking for a little bit more value a little bit more odds so today we have our live long shots and we're we're going to look at all 14 races matt uh we're waiting for pre-entries to come out on monday or at least uh, be made on monday we'll find out about them i believe next wednesday but for now we feel pretty good about uh, some of these live long shots we're talking about you ready to jump right into friday I guess so. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Matt. The Juvenile Turf Sprint. That's the first on our list on Friday. Who's your pick? My pick is a an impressive recent winner of the Turf Futurity at the Belmont at the Big A meeting uh, for Graham Motion by the name of Nagar Nagarock. And, and hey, you got to love the name there, Brian, Nagarok, because Nagarok is Corrigan the wrong way, like wrong way Corrigan, you know, I don't know. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was witty, but uh, it was an impressive victory for that horse who had broken his maiden also at the Belmont at the Big A meeting after having been a private purchase after the horse had made his first career start at Horseshoe, Indiana. Yeah, interesting. And some of those horses coming from uh, Horseshoe, uh, Indianapolis, there are, are, are undervalued and, and they offer value. So uh, this one coming off a uh, futurity win. And Matt, if you had a Budweiser in your hand, I'd be calling you Harry Carey right now with those uh, – backwards pronunciations of your horse hey i like the name of my horse too my long shot for the breeders cup juvenile turf sprint is going to be sharp as a tack mat this horse has sharp early speed for trainer doug o'neill a son of that uh, new sire sharp as tecca and sharp as teccas have been running as we know sharp as a tech sharp as a tack look good in his debut out in california winning five furlongs on the turf he came back with a Big performance at Monmouth Park. Five furlongs and 55 and change, Matt Schiffman, to win the Tyro by more than seven lengths. Last time he got to that uh, the slightly different track, Kentucky down, six and a half furlongs, and he tired late to be second. But I think he's a five furlong, five and a half furlong for the Breeders' Cup purposes kind of horse. Uh, there will be speed in this race, of course, as we know. But I think sharp as a tack. Sharp as a tack. It's hard, it's hard for me to differentiate between the sharp as a tack and sharp as tack at his sire. But anyway, that's my long shot, Matt. All right, enough about that. Let's go to the juvenile fillies. I talked about this filly a, a little bit last week, Matt. I, I see you jumped on the band, bandwagon. Chop, chop. I did jump on the bandwagon, Brian, you know, with the prospect that we might get a decent price on a Brad Cox horse out of the young sire city of light after a really nice second place finish in the Alcibiades. Um, and that came on the heels of uh, 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 winning a stake at Kentucky down. So we got a horse here that's, that's already shown some versatility, broke its maiden at Ellis, at Ellis Park. So versatility in surfaces, versatility at different racetracks already. Yeah, I really like Chop Chop quite a bit, and, and I think she will have some decent odds in here. I'm not sure how big a long shot, but certainly uh, Chocolate Gelato looks like a favorite in this juvenile Phillies. Yeah, Chop Chop, as you said, two different two different tracks, two different turf courses to win a maiden at Ellis and a stakes race at Kentucky Downs. She went in the Alcibiades, and I thought she ran a very good race. In fact, I thought she was the best horse in the race. She had some trouble both at the start and in the stretch and just missed by a nose catching Wonder Wheel in that grade one race over the track. There's still a chance, I guess, that she comes back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf, but as good as that race was over the track, I think the uh, Juvenile Phillies is more likely. I like Chop Chop 
and I like to chop chop as a jockey man. Jorge Chavez, of course, was known as Chop Chop back in the day. Juvenile Phillies turf, again, I'm going to talk about a Philly I talked a little bit about last week. Who do you have as a long shot in the Juvenile Phillies turf, Matt? And again, I don't know how much of a long shot this horse is going to be. I'm talking about uh, Pleasant Passage, who has won both of her starts for Suge McGahee, uh, including a first in the Miss Grillo recently, a grade two, with a really game front end effort. And hey, Brian, speed is dangerous. Yeah, speed is always dangerous. And I've seen some of these horses like her get let go at pretty good odds. And it, it, it's happened recently, in fact, in the Breeders' Cup. And the Juvenile Turf Philly should be one of those races with a lot of horses. So we're probably looking at good value at just about anyone uh, uh, other than the favorite or the second choice here. Uh, my long shot is a horse I like a lot, too. Her name is Zigjara, and I probably butcher it. Folks, if you've been watching Horse Center for the last 10 years, you know how I love to butcher pronunciation. So uh, have fun with my pronunciation of some of these horses. But Zigjara... Uh, was a very good debut second at Saratoga on the grass to a, to a Philly I think is very good. And then she came back next out and was awesome in breaking her maiden for fun at Saratoga. I think that was a huge performance. I think that was the best juvenile Philly turf performance I've seen in America. Last time she ran in that dirt race, the great one, Alcibiades, at Keeneland. And uh, again, had a little bit of trouble in there. She was forced. She got put up to third. I thought it was a good performance, but I like her on turf better. The daughter of Nyquist, trained by Phil Bauer. She'll be my long shot in the juvenile Phillies turf. Matt, uh, I see we're going juvenile, and and for the second time already, we're on the same long shot in here. Matt, I don't know if Blazing Sevens qualifies as a long shot, but listen to me here, folks. Blazing Sevens is a pretty easy winner of the grade one champagne, and usually that means one of the favorites for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But with Cave Rock, an overwhelming favorite, and the fact that I think they will bet the Breeders' Futurity horses, the horses that ran 1-2 in the Breeders' Futurity next, I think we might just get double digits on the Champagne winner. Hey, Brian, and like I said uh, 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 earlier uh, about a Brad Cox runner, getting a price like that on a Chad Brown runner certainly makes it makes this course qualify as an interesting live long shot won the champagne before that was third in the hopeful and a maiden breaker at saratoga so uh this is a nice horse it's a nice horse for sure and uh, i tell you what i want to see blazing sevens on a fast track um good magic's he's a son of the 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 good young sire good magic who's the son of curlin so there is some reason to believe he can handle it off track. And, and in the hopeful, he was last early, rallied for a well-beaten third on a sloppy track. And then in the champagne, uh, I think more to his liking as far as stretching out a little bit, uh, he won the champagne nicely on a sloppy track. Let's see what he can do back on a fast track because I really liked his debut performance at Saratoga. And like I said, uh, this champagne winner, Matt, no better than the fourth choice. I think we're going to be surprised how good his odds are here in the juvenile. Cave Rock is going to be four to five or so. All right, Matt, our last live long shot for juvenile day, Friday, November 4, Keeneland. It's the juvenile turf. We've got a couple of different ones here, uh, which is always good to uncover some odds, especially in a race where it's often wide open. Who do you like? Yeah, Brian, and it, you know, this race was particularly tough because it's hard to know which Europeans are coming over. But uh, I landed on the possibility of the Antarctic as my live long shot for Aiden O'Brien. And, and this horse brings tons of experience uh, over to uh, Keeneland if he comes with eight career starts. And probably his best recent form coming. Uh, Recently, with a second in the grade one, uh, uh, Judmont with a third at, in a grade one at Deauville, and also a group three victory at Deauville also. It's Aiden O'Brien, and O'Brien certainly does his best 
shipping to North America when it is for the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, and 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 fall in America, a little chill to the air. Those European horses uh, figure to run well, and the Juvenile Turf will uh, be a race where. Uh, like last year, the Europeans will be tough. Of course, it starts with Charlie Appleby. Uh, and all of a sudden, Aiden O'Brien has some horses with odds. And uh, that didn't used to be the case. But uh, I'm on the same kind of uh, uh, thought process here with you. I went for a horse who I think is more of an up-and-comer from the Aiden O'Brien barn. A very interestingly bred, Irish bred. His name is Cairo. He's the son of Quality Road out of a Galileo mare. So interesting breeding right there to start with. He's uh, at four races over in Europe. He's won two. He's finished second in two. His last two turf races, there was an all-weather track where he ran second thrown in the middle. But his last two turf races, he's won. And I thought he looked very good last time winning a Group 3 race in Ireland. A little less known than some of the big, heavy-hitting two-year-olds coming from Europe. But I think Cairo is developing. And, I, and that breeding interests me. That last race interests me. And I think Aiden O'Brien is going to pop for some odds in one of these turf races. It might very well be the juvenile turf on Friday. All right, Matt, those are juveniles. We know less about those long shots than some of the horses we're about to talk about. Uh, first, we'll go turf, just like we did last week with our most likely winners. We're going to go the turf races on Friday first. So these races are not in order of how they will be run on Saturday, but we broke them down by turf and then dirt. Without uh, further ado, we're going to start with the turf sprint, Matt. Tell me about your long shot in the turf sprint. Yeah, my long shot is Dancing Buck, and, and I think this one's going to be a, a legitimate long shot from uh, uh, an excellent trainer in Michelle Nevin, you know, probably considered low profile in terms of the Breeders' Cup landscape. But this uh, horse has already got uh, three victories, including the recent Belmont Turf Sprint, which is a grade three. Uh, before that was second in the Lucky Coin at Saratoga. It's got an allowance win at Saratoga and uh, a maiden special weight win at Belmont Park. So good credentials for a horse that is going to be a big price. Yeah, and I think after uh, Golden Pal, uh, who is the horse to beat here, and, and, and Highfield Princess, assuming she comes over, I think after those two, uh, everybody else is a long shot, and, and you'll probably have a full field of long shots in here. I looked at Caravelle. Caravelle's an interesting... I, I think fillies and mares can beat uh, uh, the boys in, in more races than they are given credit for or they're given a shot to do. And I think on turf, that's especially true. And maybe turf sprint is the most obvious place where a really good Philly and mare can beat the males. Caravelle is a really good Philly and mare. She loves this distance. Five and a half furlongs is right up her alley. She finally got her first shot at Keeneland last time. This is a Philly who's won 11 of 19 starts, trained by Brad Cox. And she finally got her first sh shot over the Keeneland turf course last time. And I thought she looked very impressive just last week. Uh, in the Franklin beating a good field of Phillies. I think she has a real shot to beat them, the males. And like we said, after the top two favorites, everybody will offer value. All right, Matt, next is the Philly and Mare Turf. And yes, I'm going to pick a Philly and Mare in here as well, Matt. But uh, you go ahead and tell me who's your top Philly and Mare long shot. Yeah, my top long shot. And again, I'm not sure how big a long shot this one is going to be. I guess it depends on which Europeans uh, uh, show up. But I am picking in Italian for uh, Chad Brown. Speed Horse, two grade one wins uh, recently, including the First Lady at, uh, at Keeneland and the Diana at, at Saratoga. Uh, eight starts in her career, five wins, two seconds, one third, all top three finishes. And as I said before, speed is dangerous. Speed is dangerous, Matt. You're right. And uh, I'm going to actually talk about in Italian a little bit yep. more in a minute. But first, let me reveal my long shot pick in here. And yeah, maybe Matt and I didn't go with two long shots in this race, but uh, mm -hmm. I think the Europeans are going to be the favorites in here. Um, I'm going with a three-year-old filly from Canada. And, of course, Mora. Mora is a very good 
two-year-old filly for Canada, trained by Kevin Attard. This daughter of Go Zapper has run in nothing but stakes in her six races up in Canada, and she's been very, very good. The first five came on their synthetic surface at Woodbine, and of course she was an impressive, easy winner over the boys in the 10 furlong Queen's Plate. That's the biggest, uh, the most prestigious race in Canada anyway. Last time she got turfed for the first time, and I thought her performance was good. It was a troubled trip, and 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 she uh, caused part of the trouble uh, for other horses, in fact. But uh, kind of a, a stinky ride that she got there in the EP Taylor, which is pretty big ten for a long race on the Woodbine turf. She's coming back for a second time on turf. She's getting Frankie Detori, which I think hurt her long shot status for me a little bit in the Philly and Mare turf. But I think she's for real. I think she's a very classy, talented three year old, and I think she will have a big shot in the Philly and Mare turf. Uh, well, let's go right to the mile and I'll go first this time, Matt, because you already talked about in Italian, I think she's better at a mile and a mile three sixteenths. After winning the first lady and the Diana, I think I think people are assuming that she will be going against Philly and Mares at a mile and three sixteenths in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare turf. And, and I think Matt is thinking that way too, but I, I actually think she makes more sense in the mile. You already know what I said about Philly and Maris beating males in big races, especially on turf. I, I think she's really, really good speed. She's getting better with every start. She's got a late start to her career, and she's been just getting better by the start. I, I had a nice win on her last time when she beat Regal Glory. I was at Mile. I was at Keeneland, and she flashed big speed to do it. I don't, I don't see why they would not go for the boys in the Breeders' Cup Mile, especially considering Chad Brown has several other – Good candidates for the Philly and Mare turf. Who's your long shot? Yeah, my long shot is uh, Annapolis for Todd Pletcher, th up and coming three year old. I say up and coming three year old, even though uh, Annapolis has got a terrific lifetime record uh, uh, in seven starts with five wins and two seconds. But it's it's his last couple of races where I say up and coming because he's been a very, very impressive winner, uh, most recently in the Turf Mile at Keeneland and before that in the Grade 3 Saranac at Saratoga. Um, also was second in the Saratoga Derby. This horse is dangerous. Three-year-olds have done uh, okay in the past in the mile. Yeah, and he's got a big win over the track. That was a very nice win for Annapolis. I, I, I'm not sure the odds of Annapolis. Uh, Modern Games will be the favorite for sure in here. I think he 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 will be under two to one, and there'll be a lot of options here. So there should be good value after every one but Modern Games. I could see Annapolis being the second choice off that win last time, but who knows? Maybe not. I mean, there's a lot of interesting candidates in here, including the one I was talking about, the, uh, the four-year-old filly in Italian. All right, Matt, last turf race of Saturday is the biggest one, and I see you're on a horse of some major odds in your long shot for the Breeders' Cup turf. Yeah, I think Red Knight is going to end up with a big, big odds, particularly on the heels of a little bit of a stinker in his last start when he was eighth uh, in the Sycamore. But before that, was a very impressive winner of the Kentucky Turf Cup, a grade two uh, at Kentucky Downs. And and before that, had a stakes win um, at Colonial Downs in the Colonial Cup for trainer Mike Maker, who was always dangerous in big races on the grass. Yeah, you know, Red Knight is a stakes winner at Keeneland previously. And he's coming off of two stakes wins before throwing in a subpar effort last time. That makes him all of a sudden a huge long shot in this Breeders' Cup turf. So I think that's an interesting pick if you're going American. I just I just like the Europeans in this race, a mile and a half on turf in the fall. It just says European to me. And I am also going for an absolute bomb. I think Stone Age is going to have some big odds in here. I think both of our horses, mine even might be longer than yours, Matt, because these are, these are bonds. Stone Age is a three-year-old from that guy, Aiden O'Brien. Remember Order of Australia last time? 
in, in a Breeders' Cup turf race recently for Aiden O'Brien. Remember the kind of odds he had. Stone Age reminds me a little bit of that. This horse has some class. He's a three-year-old son of Galileo. I think he wants a mile and a half. He's already run two races in America. They're not going to look great on paper, but I tell you what, they weren't bad either, especially when you consider he wants more distance. I got a mile and a quarter at Belmont, and he wasn't beaten that much by a very good three-year-old. Uh, he went back to Europe and ran in big, older horse races at a mile and a half. And again, he ran pretty well, even though he was fifth in both. He's coming off a of fifth at Ascot, but he wasn't beaten all that much by the top older horses. I just feel like Stone Age has a lot going for him as a horse who's going to be huge odds in this race. And remember I said this, Stone Age wants a mile and a half. Watch out for him at crazy odds in the Breeders' Cup turf. Matt, we've done Friday. We've done the turf races. The only thing left are five big dirt races on Breeders' Cup Saturday. We're going to keep chugging along. Let's see what we got here, Matt. The first one is the Philly and Mare Sprint. I think we have a couple of really nice mares in a race that should be, in my eyes, pretty wide open. Yeah, pretty wide open usually is. Philly and Mare Sprint often produces some big prices. Um, the Girls run their sprint race at seven furlongs. The guys run theirs at six furlongs. Um, for me, I'm going with uh, Edgeway, shipping from California for the barn of Jad John Sadler, who since he finally won a Breeders' Cup race is doing really well. He is, excuse me, she is the winner of a grade three at Del Mar recently um was sixth in the derby city distaff at a churchill downs that was a grade one and before that won another grade three at uh santa anita yeah this race is interesting because last week we said cc is our our, our, our mutual top pick and I, I think she will have some reasonably decent odds just like last year but these mares we picked are are even better and i tell you what if if this race was six furlongs Edgeway might have been my long shot as well, but going seven furlongs, I'm looking for a horse who can lay them down and pick them up in the stretch, and that's obligatory for me. It's a daughter of Curlin, trained by Bill Motts, always been a classy horse who loves to rally in these long sprints. And yeah, I know she was beaten at Saratoga last time, and she hasn't done a heck of a lot this year, although she won a grade one race, Churchill Downs, Kentucky Derby Day at seven furlongs earlier this year. So obligatory is my horse to come running down the stretch late in this Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. And I, I think, again, much like Edgeway, I think she's for real in here, which should be a wide open race. I like our picks in that race, Matt. Probably double digits. In fact, I'm pretty sure double digits on both of them. Next, we are going to look at the male counterpart. As Matt already said, it's six furlongs for the males. The Sprint, we're looking at Jackie's Warrior as once again the favorite but last year he was the beaten favorite. Matt, who are you on in the Breeders' Cup Sprint? Ryan, I'm going to go, you know, a little bit out of the box for uh, for me. Um, I'm going to go with CZ Rocket. He's eight years old now, Brian. And and typically, you know, uh, I, I don't go for horses of that age. But, boy, I was impressed with his uh, – last performance with his prep race for this where he was second in the santa anita sprint a grade two where uh he made a closing move coming up the rail got into tight quarters uh uh with about a 16th of a mile to go gutted it out uh and got through and and got a nice set second place finish he comes from the barn of peter miller who is back uh training again and remember not too many years ago, Brian, Peter Miller had a stronghold on the sprints in the Breeders' Cup for a couple of years. Yeah, and CZ Rocket has a lot of, a lot of back class and uh, obviously a, a nice last performance. We both kind of went old school here because I'm on last year's Breeders' Cup winner as a long shot. No one is talking about Aloha West last year, and I guess not a lot of people were talking about Aloha West last year uh but aloha west came into last year's breeders cup with some better form than this year but you know i it, it might sound almost counterintuitive but these experienced horses who 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 don't do who, who don't have a lot of racing they can in a sprint in the in, in a race in a big sprint six furlongs they can come up and show their best almost out of the blue fresh 
And, and I think Aloha West is a really good candidate to do that, especially if Jackie's Warrior has some trouble on the front end a little bit and it's tiring late. Aloha West, I've seen him run well at Keeneland. He was good last time winning a listed stake at Churchill Downs, which was way back in July, but he's working out for Wayne Catalano and Wayne Catalano just won uh, the Phoenix uh, sprint at Keeneland uh, with another horse, Manny Wa, which was a big surprise. I could see Aloha West coming back and running a huge race. And again, I think he'll have very good odds. The Dirt Mile, Matt, uh, should be a wide open race. Uh, we, Jack Christopher, if he's in it, he's the favorite. Uh, that would change the odds of other horses. But I think we've picked out two horses here with odds. Yeah, and and you know it's a little bit up in the air for me with a couple of horses. Um, are they going to go in the sprint? Are they going to go in the dirt mile? Jack Christopher uh, uh, being one of them, and, and the horse that um, that that I'm picking here, uh, Gunite. Um, uh, same thing. Not sure which race Gunite's going to go in in the sprint in the dirt mile, but either way, you know, honestly, if I thought. Gunite was going to go in the sprint. He might have been my long shot pick. I was very impressed with the Steve Asmussen runner. It's a three-year-old. Some gutsy, gutsy performances uh, this summer, Brian. This horse is a fighter and, and is going to be in it getting to the wire. Uh, most recently won a stake at Churchill Downs. And before that, in a couple of starts at Saratoga, was second in the uh, in the Jenkins uh, Jerkins Memorial and won the Amsterdam. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting field. And, and of course, Jack Christopher changes things a little bit, whether he's the clear favorite in the dirt mile or whether he runs in the sprint. I think there will be some good older horses in here. I think there'll be some good three-year-olds in here. And I think there will be some horses who generally are thought of a little bit more sprinty. I've always thought of Gunite as a horse who wanted Saratoga who moves up at Saratoga more than anything. But like you said, that last race at Churchill Downs, maybe that opened my eyes a little bit. For me, the dirt mile, uh, I have to be on senior. Buscador is my long shot. I've always thought he was a talented horse. He's a talented rallier. Trained by Todd Fincher, the son of mine shaft, was no time. But he has come back good, and he is getting better. I liked his last race in the ACAC. -AC. This is one mile race, but there's a long run up to, to, to fit it into the Keeneland uh, configuration. So there, it, it's almost a mile and 70 yards race uh, in truth. And I, I think that will fit senior Buscador's rally well. He's getting better by the start after that super long layoff for trainer Todd Fincher. I think he is a very live long shot in the dirt mile. The distaff, Matt, we went different ways in here because I think you're one of, on one of the four favorites. But on the other hand, she's not one of the Pletchers. So that fits as value in the distaff. Yeah, going to have some value. Not not one of the big bombs like we've had in some of the other races. But like you said, with Nest and Malathot in there for um, Todd Pletcher, Clarier coming back, uh, those are certainly going to be the, the top three picks. So probably as a fourth choice uh, with uh, Society, the recent winner of the Cotillion great uh, grade one and the winner of the Charlestown Oaks. This horse has speed. And here I go. I'm going to say it once again. Speed is dangerous because we're talking about Nest and Malathot, and we know those two like to sit off of the lead. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually interested to see how the distop is bad. I have a feeling that Nest will be the clear favorite over her stable mate, Malathot, the older stable mate Malathot. And, and then you have a gap. And then you have the Asmussen horses. And that's uh, Clarier and Society. And it'll be interesting to, to see how they're bet. I can see Society getting bet a little bit off that huge win at Parks with all that speed. And, and I don't blame you. I mean, if I, if, if I was looking for a horse with a better shot to win this race, I would probably say Society is my long shot too. But I'm looking for a little bit more value and everybody after the top four is going to offer value. Certainly Blue Stripe will offer value. She didn't do a heck of a lot last year in the Breeders' Cup to staff, but things might be different this year for the Argentinian champion. Uh, she has now had much more time in America, and she's kind of been pointed for this race, lightly raced, but that's how she was down in Argentina. 
lightly raced this year, but she's been very good in California. She can rally, and I think she is a very nice mare, an undervalued mare who could very well fit with horses like Malathot and Claire Harris, an older mare, uh, older mare in this distaff, and she's going to have pretty darn big odds. So she is my live long shot for the distaff. Matt, we only have one race left. You know what? <laughs> uh, uh, I think Flightline, maybe more so than anybody, even more so than Cave Rock, uh, dwarfs the field as far as the odds board. He is going to be odds on, and that leaves really, really good, well-respected horses. Life is good at the center. Even Taiba, the up-and-coming Baffert three-year-old, as a reasonable value. There's going to be some horses in here that don't deserve to be big long shots. I tell you what, Olympiad, no horse fits that bill more than him. He's going to be double digits in this field. And you look at his resume, how can this horse be double digits in any race? Yeah, Brian, can you imagine, right? Uh, uh, Olympiad, Bill Mott, um, the winner of six out of the last seven races. Uh, and we're not talking about him winning claimers or allowance races. He he's winning, you know, uh, grade ones and 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 tough races, tough competition. Uh, won the Jockey Club Gold Cup uh, recently. Won the Stephen Foster. Was fourth in the Whitney. That that's that's the one race where he wasn't victorious. So a resume like that, and imagine uh, uh, being double digit. I, you got no choice but to make him our long shot pick. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I certainly thought of others, including Hot Rod Charlie, for instance. You know, I've always liked Hot Rod Charlie, but Olympiad is too good to ignore here as a double-digit horse in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And I tell you the truth, I'm starting to warm up to him a little bit more. Uh, I, I see life is good and flight line keeping each other company early in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I think that's probably much more likely uh, uh, something that uh, flight line will come out of okay. And life is good may struggle with uh, with their uh, early pressure of each other. That leaves really good horses like Taiba and Epicenter and Olympiad not too far off the lead, but kind of waiting to make their move on the turn and pounce. And Olympiad is really good at that. I also like the fact that he got a nice 10 furlong race. His first try at 10 furlongs in the Jockey Club Gold Cup last time was quite good. Olympiad is a live long shot at double digits. Whether that means running second to flight line or not, he's a live long shot in this Breeders' Cup Classic. Folks, we got 14 races of live long shots. Matt and I were in agreement on, on, on a few, but uh, there's a lot of horses to take a second look at as you start to uh, jump into the past performances next week for the Breeders' Cup. We are so looking forward to the 14 races at Keeneland. Matt, can I get a party shot from you, my friend? Yeah, we gave you a whole bunch of uh, horses, not too many where we are uh, in agreement, a whole bunch of horses to think about. Uh, think about, you know, possibly winning the race or being part of your exactas or trifectas. But we'll know more uh, next week uh, when we come back with our next show because the pre-entries were will be out. We'll know where that Jack Christopher's going. We'll know where some others are going. We'll know which Euros are coming over. So we'll see you next week for another Breeders' Cup show. And always, we want to thank you for watching the show. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, and, and I hope we know by the pre-entries. I, I, that Chad Brown can be inscrutable at times, Matt. I don't know. I, I'm expecting to see Jack Christopher pre-entered in two races. Yeah. And in Italian pre-entered in two races. Of course, there will be first preference. So hopefully the first preference tells the story, as Matt was alluding to there. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, folks. We appreciate you tuning in every week. If you haven't yet followed us here on our YouTube channel at HRN, do that now. Turn on those notifications. I also want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars, obviously. Guess what? We'll be back next week with a big Breeders' Cup show right here on Horse Center. We will see you then.